about the well-being of the children or the church that is located in the city of um, Thessalonica. And so he has dispatched his um, faithful servant and companion and fellow, and fellow servant in the faith, uh, uh, Timotheus, or we know him better as Timothy, and he's, he's sent him down there to basically to get a report and come back and give, a, give him a, a report. And so Timothy have, have gone down and maybe for a reason I lost my notes on tonight. Maybe the Holy Spirit said, get on through these uh, a few uh, scriptures. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to read the scriptures all the way through down to verse 13. But what, I'm wanna, what I want to pick up on is... I want to talk more tonight about encouraging the believer's faith. Encouraging the believer's faith. Yeah, let me get let me get that. Let me get that. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's good to get your wife to pay for so what you're gonna do. <laughs> Amen. And so. I want to, and so I really want to hum in. I want you to hear my heart tonight. I'm, I'm speaking to the body as not just as a church, but as the church here. Um, your faith is is vitally important to me, and, and I know it's important to you because only through your faith are you saved. And so it is your lifeline to heaven. It is your ticket to eternal to eternal salvation, eternal life. But to me, why would I be so important? Uh, why would your faith, your personal faith, be so important to me? Because we, um, sort of like a, a Siamese twin, we can jail, we can join at the hip. Because what you do has an effect on me. And what I do has an effect on you. Why? Because you yes, my brother, that's my sister, that's my, my brother, my sister. We are, and so when the body hurts, everybody hurts. When your head hurt, everything in your body hurts. Okay, and so and so Paul is Paul is using this analogy, and he said, "I am concerned about the believer's faith." So I'm here to encourage the believer's faith. That's your faith and my faith. And Paul, and so let's um, dive right into it. Uh, chapter three, First Thessalonians, and I'm going to read from verse six down through verse. Um, verse 13. Let me pick it up. He says now, but when Timothy or Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us again, I mean, brought us good tidings of your faith and your charity and that you have good remembrance of us always desiring greatly to see us as we also to see you. Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our afflictions and in distress by what? By your faith. That's what gave us comfort. For or, or because now we live. Why? If you stand fast in the Lord. Why would Paul say, I live if you stand fast? It, 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 remember, the church never dies. The church lives and lives and lives forever. So everyone is connected to the church and standing fast in their faith. That's the church living, whether it's over in Zaire, whether it's over in Ukraine, whether it's over in, 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 in Tiananmen Square, whether it's over uh, 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 in Russia, wherever it may be, down in Parliament, in Great Britain, wherever the church is, the ch we live because the church lives. And listen, and Christ lived because the church lived because the church is his body. And so when we understand that Paul is saying, I'm living, listen, I'm living off your faith because I'm connected to your faith and your faith is connected to me because our faith connects us and makes us, listen, part of the body through Jesus Christ. So he says, now we live if you because of your faith. Now listen, then he says, for he said, now, because of that, now, or because now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. Again, he's talking about how we live in. Because what thanks can we render unto God again for you? For all the joy wherewith we joy for your sake 
before our God, night and, night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Paul said, I'm coming and listen, my whole goal is to get to you and spend time with you to listen, to settle you and to strengthen you and establish you in the faith. Because remember, this is a young church. It's, it's, it's very tender. And it's being and surrounded by a lot of uh, heresies, about, about a lot of gangsters, about a lot of philosophers. You got the stoics, you got the skeptics, the skeptics, you got the uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, you got all these coming in, and then you got that Eastern Orthodox um, a doctrine coming in, trying to drain and trying to choke out the church. So Paul said, listen, I need to get there and get to you so I can spend time with you and help you understand to deepen your faith. You cannot have shadow faith in this day and time. I'll say the same thing. So it says this. Now God himself and our father, I love this, and our father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct your way unto us. And the Lord make you to increase, here it is, increase and abound in love one toward another. I can stop there, listen, and just preach all day. Never open a Bible. Just preach all day in that area right there. We'll love one toward another to all, toward all men, even as we do towards you. And to the end, he may establish you may establish your heart unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father at the, at the coming up of the Lord Jesus with all of his saints. It's important to understand what Paul, so Paul says, listen, I'm, I've heard of, I heard of the report. Now here's my response in, 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 in proportion to the report that I've heard, because I've heard a gay, I've heard a gay report. I've heard a joyous report. I've heard that you're standing strong in the Lord Jesus. Let me have you pull up Romans 1. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, oh. You know what? Here's my problem. Oh, my wife looking at me, shaking her head. Yeah, you ain't giving me the whole strip. You just told me Romans. <laughs> well, here's what, here's what Paul's saying. Let me, let's go over to Romans 1. I'll find Listen, it's in the scripture. It's in the scripture. We'll find it. going to work for me that might not work for me well let me just give you this in Romans go to go to verse go to verse uh, verse 6 okay Paul again Paul has sent Tim Timothy out in this scripture in this text he sent Timothy out concerning the Roman church. And we picked it up in verse six. It says now, but now when Timothy, Timotheus came, oh, oh no, excuse me. I'm, I'm reading, I'm reading, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm reading uh, um, verse, okay, go to verse 17. Verse 17. 1 and 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from what? From faith to faith as it is written. Who? The just shall live. How? By, that's the only way you can live this life. You can't live this Christian life any other way. And it, here it is. He says, so what we was mostly concerned about was not your giving, was not your attendance, was not your, your social issues, I mean your social uh, uh, prowess to the, to the world. We wanted to know what, what was your faith intact. 
Why? Because as it is written that the just shall live by faith. Now let's, let's pick it up just a little more. He says, for, he said, why? He says, by faith. Why? Because the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Why? Because that which may be known of God is manifested in them, for God shall, or has shewn it unto them. And so, in other words, he says, the just going to live by faith. So, r men that are unrighteous, they don't try to live by faith. They try to live by works. Look what I've done. That's unrighteous works. No, God said the just shall live by faith. What is, what is saying, here it is. It is your faith that's going to take you to heaven. Faith and nothing else. It is your faith that gets you saved and nothing else. Your works only come in as a matter of reward. When God comes to get the world, to judge the world, you will not be judged with the world. Do you all understand this? Why? Because you have already accepted Jesus Christ on this side of, on this side of heaven. And, when, and, and so when he comes, you will go with him. Okay? Now, go back to um, Thessalonians. Go down... Uh, now, that's your uh, uh, base scripture. Go, go over to Hebrews 10. Let me see. Did I mark it? Hebrews 10. I'm looking for um, Hebrews 10. Okay, I am looking, see this, this is why I write everything down. Okay, pick up at verse, I want to, let me hit both of them. Go to verse 13 first. Are you there? From his expecting until his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering has he perfected. Uh, uh, he, has he perfect forever them that are sanctified? What is this saying? In other words, when Christ offered up his blood and you accepted that blood, listen, by faith, you was, you, you was perfected forever. You don't have to go back and be saved again. You know that? You don't have to go back and be saved again. Now, you can be in a backslidden state. You still saved, but you're in a backslidden state. He said, now, by one, listen, by one sacrifice has he perfected forever. And so Paul is, so what Paul is trying to do, he's trying to get back to the church of Thessalonica to make them understand no matter what they bring to you, you need to know that Jesus Christ that I preach of you, to you, Jesus of Nazareth, he has perfected your salvation forever. So you don't need to add anything to it. You don't need to pick up the Mosaic law. You don't have to offer any other any rituals. You don't have to give up any blood sacrifice. Why? You have been perfected forever. What? By one sacrifice. The problem with most of us, we don't know whether we need to go back and get saved again. If you if you ever been saved, you've been saved. Okay, how many sins did God forgive you for? All of them. Past, present, and future. Now, we can be out of the will. We can be, we can be in a backslidden state, but our salvation is secure to Jesus Christ. You say, well, Pastor, according, according to the uh, theology, that sounds like you giving me, giving someone a license to sin. I'm not giving anyone license to sin because the Bible clearly says, listen, uh, 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 shall we continue in sin that grace abound? God forbid. It said, well, sin abound, grace did much more abound. So, so 
I'm saved. And this is the problem with, with, with the Christians, most of them. They think they're working for your salvation. You're not working for your salvation. The Bible says if you work for it, then it's not a gift. Then it's something that's owed to you, and God is not in debt to any man. Is by, by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself is a gift of God, least any man would boast. And then Paul come back and say, where's boasting? What are you boasting about? I've been in church 50 years. I don't care how long you've been in church. But you still don't have anything to boast about. Then you say, well, then, well, Pastor, if that's the case, then you got Peter, you got James on one hand saying a work, a, 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 a work without faith is dead. And then you got Paul saying faith alone. So that's, a, that, that, that's some kind of a discombobulation. And no, it's not. One complements the other. Now I'm working because of my faith. My faith drives me to work. My, predate, my faith produces my work. Drop down to verse. Let me see. Which words do I want? Let me see here. Drop down to verse, verse 23. He says, let us hold fast to the profession of our what? The profession of our, uh, our hope. Y'all got hope of faith. In 23, 1023. Okay. Let us hold fast to our what? Our faith without wavering. For he is that. He said, now let us consider one another. Now listen, this is what here's what I'm trying I'm trying to encourage, encourage you. Let us consider one another and do what? To provoke one another to what? To love and Good and good works. My job, listen, is to propel you into and to cascade you into good works. Why? Because we are of the, we are the, of the same faith. I'm not here to provoke you to make you upset. I'm not here to try to outdo you. I'm not here to outrun you. I'm here to provoke you to good works. How do I provoke you to good works? By my good works. Hopefully and prayerfully, you will see my good works and you will begin to emulate what I'm doing. Because why? I see Jesus' good works and I want to emulate him. So we are an example to the world. So Paul, now remember, Thessalonians is what it is called the model church. If we could get, if we could get remotely close to the church of Thessalonians, Oh, my God, we should we could see some mighty things happening here. God is not concerned necessarily about the fews and the twos or the many and the mighties. God is concerned about what? Say it. Say, your faith. He said, if you say. To this mountain, he didn't say if all y'all said. He said, if you say to this mountain, be be thou plucked up and removed into the mouth. He said, and not doubt in your heart, it will will obey you. So God is not looking for an entourage. God is just looking for someone to get in agreement with him. And so Paul is telling the church of Thessalonians, he said, now we're coming down now. We want to, we, listen, we heard that you're doing good, but I got to get there. Why? It's something else I got to put in you. It's something else that I have to, I have to, I have to see in you. Now, Okay, now stop that. He said, provoking one another good work. He said, here it is. Here it is. How? Not forsaking the assemblies. Stop right there. Oh, no, 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 stop. <laughs> Not forsaking the assembly. The assembly is another word for ecclesia or the called out one. He said, you don't both of us say every time assembly is called, I expect you to be there. Why? Because, listen, because we are people of faith and God is going to do some miraculous, listen, for his children when we come together. Listen, we are good by ourselves, but we're better together. We're better together. We're better, listen, without the fussing and the fighting and the nitpicking and, and the backstabbing. We can do some things. We can move some things. But you have to believe that God wants to do something through us. 
and we have to create a channel where he can flow through us. Other than that, we'll always be hamstrung. Oh, me, oh, my, I guess we ain't going to never get nothing done. God say, no, you ain't going to get nothing done with that attitude. You have to put yourself in a position, listen, that listen, that God take notice of you. The Bible says, the Bible says, and Moses said, I must turn aside and see this bush that burns and not, not, not consume. And the scripture said, and when God saw Moses turn, when God saw Moses turn, he began to move on him. He began to speak with him. He began to give him instructions. Take off your shoes for the ground that you're standing on is holy ground. And so when you understand this, listen, you, you can look into the scriptures and you can see what God is saying. And, and Paul is telling the church of Thessalonians, listen, I really got there. I have to get there. I have to get there. This is, listen, this is my heart to you all. It's a spend time with you. I don't like just spending time with you on a Sunday, on a Wednesday. I want to spend some cuddly time, some talking time, just eating some chips and drinking some sodas and still talking about the word. Why? Because we're imparting into one another. Iron is sharpening iron. So Paul so told Tim to go down there and see what he's doing. Tim to come back. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Paul said, you know, I, I, I got to get there. Why? He said, they're ready for the next level. They're ready for the next level. Jesus said that Jesus said, there's some things that I want to say to you, but but I can't say them now. Why? You're not able to bear them. Paul says it too. There's some things that I want to share with you all. We cannot listen to this. We as a church, this church, we cannot go to the next level staying here. The next level calls for, listen, a move. It calls for something beyond of what we're doing right here and now. And Paul said, and Paul is saying the thing, same thing. He said, I'm trying to, I want to get down there to you. Why? Because there's some, there's some things I want to impart into you. Paul says this. I think it was in the book of Romans. He said, there are some spiritual gifts that I need to impart into you. If I, your teacher, am ministering and teaching you, and bringing you into some of the full of knowledge and some of the uh, uh, and, and laying open the scriptures, there's something that I have that you need, and you can only get it either by my visitation or by you hanging on with me. Here, so so there's some things that I need to part into you that you're not going to get until we spend time together. Are you listening to me? And so Paul, Paul said, we're designed to see you why? That we may part what? Some spiritual gifts. Go over to, go over to 12. Go over to, go to chapter 12. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm just going to go over there. Let me pick up verse 2 real quick. Pick up verse 1. Verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we have what? Compassion. Now, now we're just coming out of what, what is called in chapter 11. It's called a hall of faith. Chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews is called the hall of faith or the heroes of faith. And Paul has just finished going down this litany list of all the great heroes of uh, uh, um, all the way from, from the beginning up to now. And then Paul gets over into chapter 12. He said, now here's the total summation. Here's the total uh, 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 resolution of what I'm saying in chapter 11. Let me begin it with chapter 12. He said, therefore, wherefore, therefore, wherefore, seeing that we also are compassed about with what so great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside what? Let me talk to you about a weight again. Some things are, are worth repeating. Some things are worth repeating. I've talked to you all about weight, okay? Weight is not necessarily a sin. A weight can become a sin. But a weight slows you down just as, just as well, okay? It says, it says, every weight and the sin, which, so, which do so easily beset us and let us run how? With patience. What kind of race? The race 
that is set before us. In other words, I can't live your life that Christ has prescribed for you. But you have to run your life and this race with patience. Patience is a, a virtue. Even the world would pick that up. <laughs> right? Patience is a virtue. When you learn to trust God, what you're doing, you're exercising patience, but you're also exercising what at the same time? Talk to me. Come on. I just, I'm, just talk, I'm talking about it. Faith. When you're exercising patience, you're, you're, showing, you're showing forth your faith in God to wait patiently on the Lord while he, while he do his work. With the Bible say he works on the left hand, and, but he blesses on his right hand. I don't know what God doing on his left, but all we see is the blessings. We don't know what God is doing behind the scene, but we know we're waiting patiently. Listen, we're, the, we're uh, running this race. He said, now, and here's how we do it. Here's how we do it. If you don't never know how to run this race with patience, here's the antidote. Looking, well, he is what? He is the one that started, and he is the one that, listen, that is authorized to finish it. You didn't start your faith, and you won't finish it. He is in charge of keeping your faith intact as long as you keep your faith in him. Because the Bible says he is the author and the finisher of your faith. That's where the scriptures come in. By grace are you saved. Finish it up. Through faith. Not a, not a works. At least any man should both. And, say, and that not of yourself. What is not of yourself? The faith. That, that don't, it, listen, you, do you know you can't, you can't be saved until God give you, give you the faith to be saved? It's called what? Saving? Saving faith. Saving faith. He gives you the grace. The grace is, listen, what he just allowed you to do, but it's the faith that saves you. So it's a saving, it's a, it's a saving, your faith saves you. Is God's grace, which is his unmerited favor, that allows you to receive the grace. See what I'm saying? You can't get saved without, uh, uh, without uh, 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 faith, and God gives you that faith merely because of his grace. So this is what Paul was saying. This is what Paul was saying. I, I want to part these things into you. Why? Because no one will ever be able to snuff out your salvation based on what they think or what they presuppose. I, listen, I know I'm saved, and listen, there's no devil in hell. There's nobody on earth. I don't care how big their church is. They can't tell me I ain't saved. Right. Now, listen, some of my theology may be screwed up. Some of my doctrine may be twisted. But one thing for sure, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he was born of a virgin. I believe he lived a sinless life. I believe he died on the cross for my sin. I believe he was buried in a, in a, in a, in a, buried in a, in a, in a bar tomb. And I believe on the third day, he rose again. That's the gospel. Nobody can take that from me. They might call me a country boy. I don't want to listen to him. Turn me off. I'm still saved. That's the confidence we have, that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. So, Paul said, I got to get back down to, there to you. Listen, uh, Thessalonians, Thessalonians said, let you know to, to root you in this thing. Because we discovered last week, he said, at least by some means, Satan, what, and get advantage of you. He said, I got to get back there. Why? By, by at least some means. What was the what was the mean? False doctrine. False teaching. Do you know you can listen to something so long it'll become truth to you? And the hardest thing to do is unearth a lie. Because once somebody believes something, it's hard to get it out of them. A mentality is hard to change. Well, my pastor said, listen. Listen, I ain't not, listen, I don't know your past. I'm not knocking your past. I'm just merely saying what the scripture says. 
Well, my pastor said that it didn't mean that. So what make you right and my pastor wrong? And what make you wrong and my pastor right? And Lord, here we go. And Satan said, I got him now. He's in a conundrum. He, he, he can't explain why. His theology is not deep enough. His doctrine of scriptures is not uh, deep enough. You need to know this, that when you are saved, listen, when you show enough, give your life to Christ and believe in his salvific finished work on the cross, you are saved. Point blank, period. Listen, you can, listen, you can close the door, turn out the light, lock the door, and school is out. You are saved. And you live like it. I live like I'm saying. What I'm saying, what I'm saying, I'm I'm not arrogant. I just know I'm saved. Listen, and I still stumble. And I still miss it, but listen, that don't it doesn't bother my salvation. That's the problem with the church, most people. Oh, I'm just trying to make it in. Lord, I'm just trying to climb this mountain. Didn't God say, speak to the mountain? Didn't the Bible say, listen, didn't the Bible say, uh, uh, um, um, oh, what's the scripture? I just slipped in my mind. Who the son is set free is free indeed. Let me finish it. He said, now, here it is. Looking unto Jesus, often the finish of our faith. And then I told you, Paul always does what? He always going to give commendation to the Lord Jesus or to, or to the Father God. Then he simply says, who for the joy, here it is, who for the joy uh, that was set before him endured the cross. Oh, my God. So, so Paul is saying it was Jesus. It was God. Good pleasure come down here and die for us. That's what he's saying there. Who for the joy that was set before him. What was the joy? You and I. You and I. He endured the cross doing what? Despising. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Here it is. If the church can ever seat themselves in the concept that you're saved, you don't have to live with the thought of falling out of grace with God. It doesn't mean you're not going to sin no more. But the Bible says, let not sin have dominion over your mortal body. Let not sin reign over you. I'm not driven by sin. The sin nature remains. And because of that, I'm subject to flaws. And I'm going to miss it. God didn't save me because I was perfect. He saved me because I wasn't perfect. He didn't save me because I was good. He saved me because I wasn't good. And when the call the salvation came, I simply said, yes, Lord, I believe in your son, Jesus Christ. The, the finished work of Christ, Christ on the cross is so simple, but it yet is so complex. It's so simple, but it is so, it is so profound that why would a holy God be so concerned by, about a piece of grain like me? A, a dust, a vapor, that's all I am. Why would he be so concerned about me and he would come and allow himself to be disrespected, put to shame? Because for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. What was the joy? He redeemed me. He redeemed you. And so Paul, now, now I want you to understand this because this is what Paul is trying to get back to the church of Thessalonium to seat them in because he didn't have a, a long time to, 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 to submit them in. Let me see, do I want to, okay, this part the shame, sit down on the right hand of God. Okay, consider contradiction of sinners. Uh, don't worry about that. Um, 
Let's, let's, let's go back to um, Thessalonians. Now, Paul, Paul, I may close out. Let me see. I got to, okay, let me, let me pick this up. Let me read this up in the Amplified Version. Brothers, for this reason, verse 7. Brother, for this reason, in spite of all your stress and crushing difficulties, we have been filled with comfort and cheer about you because of your faith. The leaning of your what? Whole personality on God in complete trust and confidence. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. That's why I was reading different. But he was saying, when we heard this, he said, we began to think about all that you're going through, all that you're putting up with, and you still held on to your faith. How many of you all know that living the Christian life is not an easy job? I don't care whether you've been saved three days or 30 years. Satan don't care. He will take you, the baby, the mama, and the daddy. He don't care. And he said, so, so as we hold on to our faith, as God walks us through this thing, what it does, it gives us an assurance and listen, and a hope that God is able to get us through. So this is what Paul's saying. Brothers, for this reason, in spite of all the stress and crushing difficulties that we have been, we have been filled with the comfort and cheer about, uh, listen, uh, about you because of your faith. Now, people, when, here it is, most people, when they get saved, they get excited momentarily but that lack and luster and that polished finish is going to burn off and then you get to do this you get to walk over, walk this thing out in shoe leather you get to walk this thing out for real all the excitement all the hula all the all the fears all the pump and all the prime is in, has died down and you start, re you start meeting real people in real churches with real attitudes who, who say, I've been saved too. And you come to see that everyone that named the name of Jesus ain't sweet as you thought they were. But you love them what? In spite of. You love them in spite of. What gives you that ability to, to do it? Your faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible said that you may please him who has called you to be a soldier. So we do what God do. We love in spite of. And that's not easy. It's easy to sit here and read scriptures. It's easy to learn two or three scriptures and be able to quote them. But to live one scripture, it takes every bit of faith to muster. So we go from faith to faith, glory to glory. We live this at one, we live this book one, listen, one day at a time. Don't try to live this whole book. You kill yourself. You kill yourself. Let God work on you. God had to work, uh, well, God worked on me, and he's still working on me. I'm, I'm not reading, I'm not claiming perfection, no kind of way. But he had to work on me. He started here. I ain't going to tell you where he started. You might laugh at me. <laughs> he had to start here. Then he showed me this. Then he showed me that. Then he showed me this. Then he and he's still showing me things. Why? He's bringing me into perfection. He's preparing me to meet him. He's preparing you to meet him. Every preacher is being worked on, though he's not a son of God. I don't care how long he's been preaching. When you get saved, God begins to work on you. The Holy Spirit begins to work on you. 
Now, he that begun a good work is what? Able to uh, complete it, bring it to completion. So he's working on us. Why? Why, God, why does God work in on us? Two reasons. One for this side of heaven and one for heaven itself. One for this side of heaven that we may be, what? A glorious a vessel unto him that called us. That we may be a vessel that he can use, listen, to reach and listen and speak to others. That we may be a vessel that he can set on a, a light that he can set on a hill. That we can give light to a dark world. That's on this side. But it's something that he has to work out of us before he can use us in that capacity. I know me. I can't fool me. And I can't fool God. So he began to work on me. And this is where most people can't handle it when God begins to work on you because he begins to show you you. Do you know what? Some of you, some of, listen, God showed me some things I just, it ain't me. That ain't me. He will show you. Listen, the, let me say this. If you understand the tabernacle, one day I'm going to do a teaching on the whole tabernacle. It's going to take about a year. <laughs> just about a year to teach on the tabernacle. The, the whole tabernacle is is a um, um, uh, uh, example of the kingdom. When God called Moses and told Moses to build the tabernacle in the wilderness, he said this one thing. He said, see that thou build it according to the pattern that was showed thee in the mount. Why? Everything in the tabernacle has a significance. Everything. And so the reason I say that, because I, I was about to make this statement, but I want to give you the backdrop. So when I get to the, when I get to the, the brazen labor, what's in the brazen labor? It's water. It's water. Okay? It show, it's a reflection. And as they as they as they as they use they use it, they reflect and they can see. It represents looking into the word of God, and God showing you you. Because you cannot get past, you can't go past that. First, you wash and be clean. Why? Because you're 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 heading toward the tabernacle until. Maybe the holy place, and of course, we know the holy of holies, only the high priest going once a year. But you had, you had to get past these, these, these items that was in the tabernacle. They were set up as, listen, as part of what we have to do, go through. Listen, uh, 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 in reality, they was, they, they, they was an example. The Bible says these things were written for our example. And so this is what Paul was saying. Paul said, now I need to get back to you. Now all the things that the Judaizers that is coming down there trying to teach you, I need you to make, make you understand they are right in a sense, but those things have been done away with. Why? Because now we, listen, we are entering into who? We're entering into Christ. And he has entered into the what? The true tabernacle. So we have a tabernacle not made by hands, but our tabernacle is a man. God is tabernacled with man. Y'all know there's a description. God is tabernacled with man. Tabernacle is another word for what? Tent. That's what it means. It's a tent. Okay. And so when he had Moses set up the tent or the tabernacle, it, it, it was a reflection of what what the Jews were supposed to do. And listen, until until Christ came. Remember, the temple wasn't done away with until Christ came. And in 70 A.D., 70 A.D., not B.C., 70 A.D., temple was destroyed. Why? Christ had came and already did what he needed to do. There need to be no more high priests. And so he, so, so, so Paul is saying, I need to get back down to you 
the, uh, uh, Thessalonians, and I need to impart some, some spiritual gifts into you that you'll understand. Listen, how when, when the Judaizers, who are the Judaizers? Who are the Judaizers? These are the people that are still trying to ca carry on the law of Moses. And the Judaizers were telling them what? In order to be saved, you must be circumcised after the order of Abraham. So that's the, and so Paul said, no, no, hold up. Jesus has already came. Okay? So now we are under the, uh, we are under the what? The law, or uh, uh, the dispensation of, y'all say it loud, grace. That's what we're under now. Okay? Now, let me read this. Okay? He said, now, um, Verse 8, he said, because now we really live if you stand firm in the Lord. For what adequate thanksgiving, I'm reading from the Amplified Version, verse 9. What adequate thanksgiving can we render unto God for all the goodness and the delight which we enjoy for the sake, for your sake, before God. And Paul is saying, we, listen, we're just so, we're so happy. Now you say, well, well pastor, why you keep showing this? Because he, what he's doing, he's showing how a church is to be cemented. And he was happy to know that even with, with a short stay with this church, he had gotten them grounded enough that they were still holding on to what he had taught them. He said, now, verse 10. Uh, verse, yeah, okay, verse 10. He said, we continue to pay, uh, pay special uh, is, uh, pray especially and with most intense earnest, earnestness night and day that we may see your face, see you face to face and men and men and men listen to this and men and make good whatever may be imperfect and lacking in your faith. He didn't ask was anything lacking. He knew some things was lacking. Why? Because he didn't have time to really seat them. I say this to you all. What I teach you, hold on to it until I add more to it. This is why I'm always asking you all questions. This is why I'm always saying, and, 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 and Paul said what? You're like, I don't know, Paul said a whole lot, Pastor. <laughs> what peace? Sometimes when I'm looking at when I'm when I'm watching the recording again, I like, yeah, the, uh, yeah, Pastor, you was out there. Ask me what Paul said. Paul said a whole lot of things. Well, anyway, well, anyway, but is in the, in in school we call it what? Check on learning. Check on learning. I want to add. Let me see. Let me see what where, where is that? Add to your faith. Is that Philippians? Add to you. Is that Philippians? Yeah. Let me see. No, I'm going to finish this up. I'm finishing this up. I'm finishing this up. He said, okay, we continue to pray, especially uh, and with most in, uh, intense earnestness, earnest, earnestness, night and day, that we may see you see you face to face and men. Men and add and or in men and make good whatever may be imperfect and lacking in your faith. Why? Now and then he gives and he begins to give a salutation. This is a prayer. This is a short prayer, Paul. Um, it was something I wanted, and I didn't write it down. Go to the book of Jude. Go to the book of Jude. It's just only one chapter. Y'all know that already. When y'all find it, tell me where he at. He hiding. Look, man. Okay. Y'all got that little rascal? <laughs> Let me see. Y'all hold on. Y'all wait. There you go. One page self. 
Okay. Um, let me see. I think I wanted um. Wide brain upper chambers. Okay. Let me give you the exaltation. Go back to go back to for, uh, Thessalonians. I'm gonna exalt. I'm, I'm gonna give you the prayer, and then we'll close out with you. Go back. Okay. Wherefore, when we okay, no, go to a uh, yeah, now twelve. Is that verse eleven? Okay, here it is. Now God Himself and our Father and the Lord Jesus and our Lord Jesus Christ direct your way unto our way unto you. Next, and the Lord make you to increase and where where. And and this is the crux of spiritual harmony, Christian harmony. He says, "Now make the Lord and and the Lord make you to increase." You can't love your brothers and sisters outside of the Lord. Do you know why? Because we have our own personal biases. We nitpicky like that. We have our own personal prejudice. Our own personal hang-ups. So we have to love so we have to love each other outside of ourselves in the spirit of God. So it go, it's going to take the Lord to be able to make you increase in love, that you can love them in spite of them, in spite of you or me. Here's why. Because love is the very apex. It is who God is. And we know where love doesn't abound, listen, Grace can't abound. Where love doesn't live, growth and increase can't take place. Satan knows that. Here it is. I'm a, I, this is a tricky one. I'm going to throw it out there. The opposite of love is, is what? The opposite. See, everybody like, I don't really tell y'all it's tricky, so they ain't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the opposite of love is not hate, it's fear. For perfect love has cast out fear. And the reason we can't love because it's, it's not so much that, that, that we hate the person, it's just we, we can't handle the fear that it's going to bring. Uh, we can't handle what it's going to bring us to. It's going to reduce us in our pride. It's going to reduce us in our importance. It's going to take us down from our prominence. And we, we, don't, like to, we don't like to reduce ourselves. When the scriptures clearly clear tell you, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. The way, the way up with God is always down. And he said, now, if you're going to increase, you're going to have to do it in love. If this church is going to increase, it's going to have to do it in love. If we're going to have to do a bound, a bound mean to, to, to progress. To move forward, it's going to have to do it in love. And he said, now, and so this is Paul's prayer to the church. He said, your faith is straight. Your faith is straight. You're tight. He said, but listen, you need some growth. You need to move to the next level. He said, no. Now, since we heard of your faith, it was your faith that, that, that prompted us, that inspired us to pray for you. He said, now you're missing a few things. He said, but I'll straighten those things out and I'll add to them me, once I get them. But right now, let this prayer suffice. We're going to pray unto God that the, that the Lord make you to increase. 
and to abound in love. Well, one toward another. Miss Ruby, if you don't love Fred, you're in trouble. Vice versa. The Bible says you're in trouble. It's impossible to grow in a body where love is not the catalyst. It is. We listen, we're gonna disagree. That's life. But love, listen, covers. A multitude. Of, and another place is that co love covers all sin. There's no reason we shouldn't have a sloppy, agape love for one another, despite what we think. Why? Because we have a reduced a, a, a thought of ourselves. We're not so important. So, so we provoke one another to good works and love. He said love toward one another and toward all men even as we do toward you. Next slide. He said, to the end, what end? To this end. To the end that he, God, may establish your heart unblameless, unblameless, unblameable in holiness before God. Even our Father, and he always comment on God, even our Father at the coming of who? Our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. That is speaking of um, the end time. That's speaking of Christ's return. Here's what he, now Paul spoke a word concerning them about the apocalypse. The uncovering of the end time. He said, if you do this, God will establish you to the end. There's nothing that you can do that you, 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 you listen, that you will lose your footing. Amen. 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 We're going to praise. Uh, we're going to bless God. We're going to go ahead and sound off from there. Next week, uh, my listeners online, pick up chapter four. We will start reading chapter four and we hope to Get into some good stuff. Paul is going to really talk about the uh, setting up the, the return of the kingdom. That's why this last piece, I didn't harp on it because I'll visit some of these scriptures again uh, in, um, in the coming chapters. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're standing.